Uh, we're uh, here uh, talking at the Sundance Film Festival with uh, uh, Nadav Sherman, who has uh, directed a... It says it's a documentary, but as uh, we read the first line of the description of this movie, uh, well, it's hard to believe that it is a documentary and not a fiction, because it says it's an extraordinary story, and one is tempted to think of it as a fiction. <laughs> But it is not a fiction. Now I'm just confused. Uh, this is a story of a, uh, a young uh, Palestinian uh, who is a... Uh, uh, he's, he's, he, well, you tell the story. You, you, you filmed it. You could tell it better than I. The Green Prince. Tell us the story. Well, it's the story of the son of, uh, of one of the biggest leaders of uh, Hamas, which is a political movement or a terrorist movement, depends how you look at it. And uh, How do you look at it? <laughs> you're you're uh, Israeli, yes? I'm Israeli, yes. Yeah. So uh, how do you look at it? Well, you know, they, they started off as a social uh, political movement. They are a branch of the Egyptian uh, Muslim Brotherhood. Mm -hmm. And they, um, at some point, branched off and they created a military wing. You know, they tried to sabotage the peace process. And they're um, very religious people. They won the elections at the end of the day, so, so you know, they uh, rule Gaza. Um, and the story is the story of, uh, of the son of one of the founding members of this organization, who was actually turned by the Israeli Shin Bet, which is the equivalent of the FBI, um, to spy against his uh, father and against his own people. Wow. Yeah, that, that sounds like a made-up story. That doesn't sound like that actually happened. Well, you'll find that, you know, real-life stories are much bigger than fiction. Truth is stranger <laughs> than fiction, as they say. Uh, and he, he is with you... Uh, uh, here in at Sundance, there are right? both. The, the, the film tells the story of the relationship between um, the source, so the the the, the, the Mossab, um, and his handler, his Shin Bet handler, who turned him. Yeah. And they started off as you know best of enemies, and they ended up as best of friends. So it's really a it's a story about you know individuals making brave choices and and connecting through that. You know, at a time where you know there's a lot of talk about the peace process, nobody's willing to make any concessions, nobody's willing to go and you know take a leap of faith. And this is what the story is about. It's about the leap of faith taken by these individuals in the most unlikely situation because their lives were at risk. Um, maybe this is a stupid question or maybe it's a provocative question. Uh, could it also be that uh, this uh, handler, his n what is his name again? Uh, Gunen. Gunen. Uh, it, it could be a story about a man who is really good at his job as someone who is uh, uh, good at brainwashing. This, he was amazing at brainwashing. Yeah. You know what, what happened after 9-11? After uh, most of the intelligence agencies flew down to Israel to learn from the Shin Bet how to handle human sources. So the way that one gathers intelligence, there are three main ways. One, the first one is, you hear a lot about it these days, the NSA stories, is uh, SIGINT, signal intelligence. That means you know plugging into uh, emails, phone conversations, and yeah. things like oh, that. Yeah, yeah. It's technology-based. The second one is VISINT, visual intelligence. Yeah. So it's based on drones, observation devices. And the most important one is human, human intelligence. So you need a human source within a terrorist organization, et cetera, et cetera, to get information. And the Shin Bet is really good at this. So after 9-11, most agencies flew down to, to learn from them. And, and Gonen was amazing at his job. I mean, he turned the son of a top terrorist leader to work for Israel. Uh, but yeah. when, when he felt that the, the source, you know, needs to, 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 to feel trusted, because he wasn't trusted by the Shin Bet. He was always considered very dangerous. Gonen, the Shin Bet handler, took, stepped outside of protocol and did something which was illegal by the Shin Bet. He ultimately was kicked out of the Shin Bet for what he did. Really? Yes. He became friends. He, beca he became friends with Mossab. He acted outside of protocol. He did it for his source. So he took great personal risk, risked his career, risked his life, to maintain this source intact. And later on, you know, Mossab, you know, left the Shin Bet, he came to America to seek political asylum. He was going to be deported from America, which would mean certain death. If he was deported from America, he would be sent back to the Palestinian territories where he would be instantly killed. I mean, Al-Qaeda put a, you know, death yeah. warrant on his head, etc. And Gonen stepped out, revealed, exposed himself to save him. Well, uh, ha are, uh, and I, they're here together, and I assume they're still... They Except both have asylum here. Exceptionally close. Are the, do they? Yeah. Do they have asylum here? 
Well, yeah, Mo- Mossab now has an asylum in America, and Gunen still lives in Israel. Really? And are they still very close? Very close. They talk all the time, and Gunen was saying some remarkable th- things this morning in the screening. Gunen's father, who was a, a three-star general in the Israeli army, you know, actually considers Mossab as one of his sons, you know? Like, Mossab was really adopted by, by, by Gunen's family. So, so you see the closeness which is possible by individuals. It's... It, it's uh, uh, films, films, film. When you when well, uh, when you see things like this, uh, it it makes you wonder why can't we just talk to each other and understand each other well, on a human well, Bill, level, Bill? Because your God is wrong. That's why we can't talk. <laughs> no, I'll okay? tell you why. Yeah. It's courage. I think it's no. And listen, I think it's courage. You know, when you, if you, like, who is your worst enemy today? Like, who is America's worst enemy? Uh, who's my worst enemy? Well, who's well, America's. She is. Yeah. <laughs> no, America's worst enemy. Uh, Al Qaeda. I, I guess you. You would That's say Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda. Okay, so I'm I'm pretty sure that if you were sitting down in a coffee shop and you met an Al Qaeda op- operative who wasn't brainwashed, was as intelligent as you are, you would find common grounds and you could talk. So individuals can always talk. Yes. Organizations, not problem. So problem. And ah. this is a story, you know, it's not about Palestinian and Israelis. It's about two individuals who acted upon their moral compass. So if you work in a company and you sit at the weekly meeting in the morning, you work for a radio station, let's yeah. say, a big radio station, and in the weekly meetings, you know, the boss takes certain decisions and says, this is how it's going to go. So, and you feel this is wrong. So you have two choices. You play along, you keep your job, or you speak up, and you can lose your job. And mm-hmm. these guys spoke up for what they believed in, and they both lost their supporting system. But they found each other. So it's not about only about politics. It's about individuals willing to follow their own moral compass. Are you willing to do what you think is the right thing to do, or are you going to shut up for your own I just, I just think it's interesting that he has had listening devices in our meetings. <laughs> yeah, That's what I'm learning. <laughs> and, in, and in radio, no, we never follow our moral compass. No, no, no. no. Never, never, In never. media in general, which is sort of, you yeah. know, that's why I'm happy about documentary films. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know what it's like in media in general. Well, I don't, you know, I'm not, I don't yeah. think that documentary film media makers are part of the media. Y- I think they're storytellers. <laughs> you, know? you can work outside the outside the system yeah yeah uh yeah you made other documentaries is that what you primarily do is that yes I, we well i you know i'm a, f- I'm a storyteller so the, the the stories that find me i you know you choose mm. the best means to tell them in this case to make it as a documentary meaning with real people mm. and the real footage that was the best way because the story is so extraordinary that had you fictionalized it it would only dilute it down so i don't really consider myself as a documentary filmmaker i consider myself as a storyteller and i would use the best means possible to tell the story and somebody will take this story and make a a fiction of it too. i'm man. sure i'm yeah. sure but that, like for my first film the champagne spy which was a story of a a kid who discovered that his father is a Mossad agent in Cairo in the 60s. It was very successful in the circuit, you know, won a lot mm-hmm. of awards, etc. Mm-hmm. It was picked up for, uh, to make a fiction adaptation, but some very prominent people, you know, people who had Oscars, mm-hmm. Palme d'Or from Cannes, etc. They've been at it for like seven years. They're still not able to crack the story. And everything is there in the documentary. So sometimes life is so complex Can't and so rich. Can't do it quite the right way. Yeah, because yeah. you have to dilute it down, you know. And, 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 and I think when you have like original material, which let's say is a documentary film, which is so complex, so rich, so emotionally gripping, you want to do something better as a fiction. And, you know, they're not able to. So let's see what happens. I don't un- uh, one thing I don't understand is the title. That, that was his code name. The Green Prince. Yeah, because green is the color of Hamas. And his father ah. was royalty. So, that, you know, each time you have a source, like an agent, you give him a code name. Yeah. So, Green Prince. You're the Green Prince. Yes. Uh, pleasure to talk to you about this. Thank you so much. I hope it's exceptionally successful. Lots of screenings uh, coming up for people to see. Yes, there are two on Friday, one at 8.30, one at 9 at Prospector Square and at the Salt Lake City Library on the 20th, Sundance Resort Screening Room, 22nd at Redstone Cinema in Park City, and on the 24th at Temple Theater in Park City. Uh, will you be available at all of those screenings to talk yes, to people? Yes, we're here. We come for the... That's where we came here. And uh, uh, Mossab and uh, Gonen will be... Uh, at m- all of those screenings as well to talk to people? I'll let you be surprised. I think for security reasons, <laughs> we don't want to <laughs> say. <Yeah. laughs> uh, thanks a lot for, for being here and talking to us about it. The Green Prince is the movie and uh, is the documentary, and uh, I think maybe you'll be seeing it elsewhere uh, also, perhaps. Oh, sure. On, uh, 
a TV station, perhaps. And cinema's near you, God yes, willing. Yes, indeed. Yes. All right, thank you very much, uh, Nadal Sherman. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having me.